Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Dishonored, Death of the Outsider, very hard difficulty, merciful and ghost walkthrough. This is the final mission of the game. It is called A Hole in the World. This is the level that gave me the most trouble finding the paths. And it did so because of uh, a large amount of bad luck. So the beginning of this mission is really fun, I liked it a lot. But when you get to the, the part where there's tons of the, the believers and all the books that's built into like the granite walls, that bit's brutal. But this is a really cool strategy. Blink past this crowd and then come to this door. The code for this is going to be generated from a pool of codes, and they might all be on the internet at this moment, but I didn't know them. So what you can do, save at that doorway, come through this door, do this platforming that you're about to see, read the journal, see what the code is, and then reload, and you don't have to move all the way back, and you can just put the code in and go through the door. It's, uh, it's one of those really interesting moments that I thought was really, really fun. Uh, my first code was 450, and I believe this one is 837. Uh, there probably is only a handful more of them, but... Um, it's not that difficult to do. I could have made my way back as well. It's just instead of, you know, taking on people outside a doorway that's kind of like a blind doorway, you can do this while they're still talking and get the perfect opportunity. So there's the 837, there's the new code, and then from that I reload back here where the autosave was, and I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to sneak forward, I'm going to blink past them, and then none of them are going to see me because they never turn around while they're talking and they talk to that guy for ages. So put your code in, get past that doorway and then push forward into the next part of the complex. So I mentioned earlier that this level was difficult because I seem to be getting the worst look in the world. Well on the recording run, I get really good luck. Uh, this is going to be another moment of luck. So we're going to move around the right hand side here in the shadows. We're going to be working our way onto these bricked buildings to get to the roof on the left. The roof on the left has a breakable window, and inside there is what leads to the rest of the level. On my first run, I had to put a portal on top of the roof, hit the window, and then teleport onto the roof and hide for a little bit, because there were a lot of people that saw me breaking the window. On this run, I break the window and nobody reacts. I have no idea why, guys, but it needs to be known that the strategy works here because there is that failsafe just in case. Because if you play this and they all react, you're going to be screwed, aren't you? But just so you know, put a portal up there, where I'm stood right now, as a safety portal just in case everybody hears you do this. But hit that, then teleport, and you'll notice no one reacts. So this is all worthless, I could have just gone in. And I don't know if it's because it, it muted the sound the moment I teleported, if there's some kind of weird thing I've discovered there, but no one noticed, so I can just go down, and it's nice and easy. That did not happen the last time I was on this level. Everybody heard that. Three people heard it. They were all patrolling. There was two women on that roof. It got really crowded really fast, and it's just an example of... Dishonored just kind of doesn't work the same every time and you need to be aware of this because if you're not you're going to have a tough time and I don't want anybody suffering like I did on this level because I was getting really frustrated. I didn't really want to play uh, any more of the game. I wanted it to end because I was just getting the worst amount of patterns. Patterns where there were three people really close together and all of them were overlooking each other and they never moved. It, it made it into almost impossible situations and then when I came and did this recording all of those impossible situations weren't present and it all went smoothly so if you are having troubles guys maybe restart the level and do the exact same thing and things will be different it sounds crazy right that's the one thing that stealth games should have consistency but this game just kind of doesn't in a lot of ways and it enables good players to react and and do things that they wouldn't be able to do normally but it also punishes people who who were put into these situations for no fault other than the game was different on that attempt. And you need to, you just need to know that this can happen. Because if you're in a bind and you're in a corner and you don't know what to do, it might not be a doable corner. You might have to work your way back to it and then figure out another angle. But I'm stubborn, so I just batted my head against it for an hour and then finally figured it out. And that's just kind of how I am. But push forward here. I blink up onto this pipe. You don't have to. You want to go through the door. But you know, I'm uh, I'm being creative. I died a few times on this level trying to do uh, cheeky shortcuts that ended up in massive pitfall deaths. So uh, just be warned. You can die really easy from falls if you're not careful. So here is a fella doing a speech, and there's a woman patrolling to the left. As long as she's not there sweeping, you're fine. Teleport down into the shadows, and then move around here, and then teleport up onto that pipe. If done correctly, no one will see you. 
from here, climb through the window, continue onwards, and we're going to be moving into the hard part. So this is the bit where my patterns decided to go god tier, and nothing worked. Doing this next sequence of movements, it, it took like 50 minutes. It was really challenging, but drop down onto the bottom floor, move forward to this part here. We're going to blink up onto the balcony and climb over the barrier past this fella just up here, and we're going to blink to his left. So, climb over this, blink across there, you'll get an autosave as you hit this corner. From here is where things can either be bullshit or things can be really fun. So blink onto the chandelier and then look across from you. On this particular pattern, there's a man moving to the right. And traditionally, if he doesn't see you like he sees me, he will go all the way to the right and stand there, allowing you to get behind him and teleport across. But this time, he saw me because he's a wizard and he goes the other way. Which is even better, because he has to do a full pattern to get back. So teleport across, get here, wait for your stuff to regenerate, teleport across there and move to the right immediately so nobody sees you from behind. If done correctly, you'll hit a checkpoint and you'll be fine, but do not move forward. Wait for your blink to come back, blink up on top of these rocks, don't go around the corner. Up here is a much better path. So from here, go towards the edge and you're going to listen to a full conversation now, so make sure you save towards the end of it. These two women here are going to be talking about the outsider. The one on the left is going to turn around after saying one line and that's your opening to move around the corner and blink up above them and they don't see you. If you do this correctly, you'll do it in one blink. If you mess up like I'm about to do, you'll do it in two and wonder how the hell you managed to do it, but it's still possible, so that should give you faith. But they talk about the outsider and then she says something like, it's tantalizing to think about it. And then the other one goes, I know what you mean. And when she says that, she starts turning. So when you hear that, angle around the corner and then blink up. And as I mentioned, if you do it right and you get good detection on your blink, you should get to the top without being screwed. But I, I cock it up because this game can... The blink detection is really frustrating sometimes. So there you go. They've turned around. I blink. I fall. I'm like, oh, I fucked it up. And then I, I managed to recover, and way, we're, we're past that section. I even turn around to make sure nobody can still see me, because I'm stunned that that worked. And then all you do is touch the Eye of the Dead God, and then it's going to teleport us to the same version of the level, but it's all messed up with the void now, because you can see the void. So you have to backtrack now, all the way back to those red brick buildings at the close to the start of the level, and now there's going to be these new en enemies, uh, I think they're called the Envisioned. They're these big, lumbering, golem-esque creatures that have pretty good awareness for big, lumbering, golem-esque creatures. So, make sure you talk to that man. Talk to that man and pick that key up. If you don't, you cannot do the non-violent method of getting rid of the outsider. That is 100% part of this strategy, and it's a pain in the dick that you have to do that. But, move down here, and if you get no envisioned around this corner, like I'm about to get, you can blink up onto that shelf that we were on when we came the other way. Once you're up there, you're in a perfect position now to move out of this zone without any problems. What you're watching here took me about 5 minutes on my second recording run. On my first recording run, this took like 30 minutes because I kept getting spotted by that envisioned creature. And for some reason he didn't see me this time. Just weird random shit and it happens all the time. Blink down here, drop down here, blink over this next balcony. And then instead of uh, going up this way, go to the left, and then you can climb up the way we dropped down. But I get a save point there, I reload, and I go backwards, because that pattern, that other way, is, is really fierce. There's a lot of people looking your way. So once you're here, blink onto that shelf to our left on the bookcase, blink up onto the, the railing that we climbed over at the beginning, and then from here, go up onto that roof, that like ironclad roof. This is the room that you could have gone to if you continued that way, but you'll notice there's two people there looking at you, there's one guy on the left looking at you, there's there's like one person down there looking the opposite way. It's a lot of eyes and it's a lot of light, and it makes you very visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blink onto the shelf on the left that's not the high one, but the low one. Then from there, I'm going to push my way to where the staircase is just in the distance. And if you do this quickly enough with, with all your blinks intact, you can get there without people triggering too quickly. So he kind of saw me, but we're good. And then from here... I'm going to creep that way, blink across, and then once you... There's another guy who kind of saw me, but then once you get to this, you're okay. And then from here, you can you can blink up onto this pipe to my right. I'm just making sure that nobody can see me, because the on very hard, the awareness is incredibly high, and they can see you through the slats in almost everything. It's, it's pretty strict. And now, this is where things get hard. 
So once you're on the top of this, there's a bunch of people beneath you. There's a one of those envisioned that's going to be walking around and going through doors, and he's got really good wet eyesight, so don't mess with him. But the real trouble is there's one dude hanging over a balcony, just kind of like peering over it, looking at the door we need to go through, and he never moves. So I tried throwing things, I tried opening vices, I tried doing a whole host of, of interesting stuff that just didn't work. And in the end, running on this balcony and making noise with my boots was the way to get him distracted. But you need to be aware, guys, when you do something like this, it never works the same every time. The way that the people go is kind of random and, and non-linear, so I can't guarantee that they're going to do what I'm about to show you. So I stand up, I jump, it doesn't work, I look down to see if he's moved, he still hasn't moved, so I'm going to have to sprint. I jump again, still doesn't work, and now I'm going to sprint a couple steps, like that. Everybody hears that, and then I'm going to move forward. Or maybe they don't. There you go, you need it to go red like that. When it has the red outline, that means they're going to move. Come over here, so that you can get a better view, and then look down to see where they're moving. Um, on this particular take, uh, nobody moved across that other side, so I moved back here. There's a lady sweeping just over there, but the guy who looked over the balcony has now moved, and he gives me an opening. So I wait for it, and then I just go for it, and boom. The key that you got off the body opens the door. Now you have to um, get the solution to this safe. So... Because this is a walk through the joys, you don't have to go through the, the process of, of discovering what the numbers were, and you can just put the code into um, the safe and, and get what's necessary. But getting out of here is also really difficult too, because it's, it's one of those things where the AI can be so random, it's, it's, it's frustrating. But the great news is, after you've put the code in here, it's, it's pretty much done, because getting out of here is tricky, and it, it'll take you a couple attempts, because the AI is kind of super random, and then you'll get one where you do the same thing you tried before, and it works. And then once there, the path to the exit is super simple, and there's no boss fight, there's no crazy final encounter. Once you get into the void where the outsider is, uh, you've done it, and you're done. So, um, here's me moving the dial to do the code. The first digit is 9. Uh, the second digit is 6, and I think that's 2. 962 is the code, I believe. Um, I may have forgot. There you go, 962. Pick up the diary, and the diary is going to tell you how to beat him without killing him. So now that you've done that, uh, drop a save near this door. You'll notice it jumps just then because I was messing around in this room and I saved on this bed to have like a different angle to see out. And all I do is teleport out twice. A guy almost sees me just then. It gets super close to seeing me, and then it disappears, and then I'm, I'm free to go. I can sit here, I can wait for my magic to come back, and then we can push forward. And then once you're on this part, uh, just in front of us there is the elevator that we use to get up. So if you move down this corridor, there's a woman sweeping just to the right, so be careful of her. But can you remember when we were sat in that minecart, and those people were talking about, oh look, we're blessed to see the Envision more than once in a day, and you saw that monster walking? This is where we are now. You've just reversed the path. So once you go through here, be careful, there is somebody there. I get stuck here, and it's one of those, you know, heart-pounding moments where I thought I was going to get caught, but luckily enough, I managed to get in without too much crisis. And then this is the lift. So once you hit the switch, wait for the lift to come about halfway up. That way you don't break your kneecaps when you warp. And then warp off it, drop forward onto the roof, and then all you can do now is, uh, is blink to the left, up onto the balconies and stuff, away from that envisioned creature. And as soon as you get to where that uh, waypoint is just there, it's going to warp us into the final zone. And you've done, guys. The only thing left to do in here is to admire the crazy flying whale, which, uh, true story, I thought maybe I had to kill the flying whale because on my first attempt I didn't know how to do the non-lethal method. So I was running around this area for ages hoping to see some significance, and the only significance I saw was the huge flying whale. Turns out, he has nothing to do with anything. But just follow the path, and then talk to the outsider. Make sure you pick the right choice where it says he doesn't deserve this, and then talk to Dowd. From that moment onwards, there's going to be a bunch of dialogue, a bunch of narrative. I can't jump up this tiny ledge because I'm clearly incompetent. And uh, that ledge was the final boss. So now you've conquered that. You, you, you're there guys, you'll get your achievement for non-lethal outsider. You'll get your 100G or your gold trophy for the never being spotted in the game. And you beat um, this game without killing anybody, without um, being spotted on the hardest difficulty. And there you go guys. Um, there's the ticks that you want, everything is at zero, and that's the end of the walkthrough.
I hope this helps you. I hope it uh, keeps you sane when you're trying to get through this because it, it's pretty tricky stuff and it looks easy, but as you know, nothing is as easy as it looks. And I'd just like to thank everybody who enjoyed the guide, if the guide helped you, if you interacted with it, if you thumbed it up, all that kind of good stuff. You're the people that helped me stay here. And just thank you very much. You take care now.